And I believe we are live. Are we live? Can you all see us? Let's see. Can everybody see and hear us okay? I don't really see the, the video on. Maybe it's my phone. Grace and Peace family, can you all see and hear me okay? I'm turning off my device and starting over. Grace and Peace. Oh, they said, I see you. I say, Lam Aleikum. Shalom. My Akotep. Namaste. Read the land, beloved. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Y'all know what time it is. You are with your sister with the race today. And I'm so pleased to be joined about very special guest, which we're going to be talking about here. And uh, I'm going to introduce you to him, but some of you are already aware of who he is in just a moment, family. I have a little bit of a ritual that as you come in, please come in giving us a big thumbs up, thumbs up. Be sure to like, be sure to share. We ask that you do that because that increases the likeliness of other folks knowing that we are here. Are y'all hearing me today? And how many of you all know that we uh, have to um, be strategic in how we try to overcome some of the limitations uh, of these algorithms that tend to unfortunately block our voice? It's talk black to me. Okay, I'm seeing comments where some of you all are seeing us clearly. So clearly that's my device. So like I said, I'm, let me see what I can do here. I've, I've started it over, but family, come on in, give us a big thumbs up on the count of three. Are you ready? One, two, three, thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. I don't even know if my notifications went out, but I am so very excited to get to where we're going today. Yay, I can see, yay. I can see, yay, yay, yay. Awesome, awesome family. I am sure you all have been seeing all that has been going on on the world stage, yes? And so um, I want to briefly get into a little bit of this, but I want to connect some dots, if I may. First of all, I want us to briefly talk about what took place with Dave Chappelle recently. And you all know that he has a very long history of being a truth teller and um, surviving cancel culture more times than we can count. Yes, I think this is very important for us to talk about. But first I would like you all to welcome our very special guest who is a beautiful journalist out of the UK. Um, he is a writer for multiple uh, 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 publications. Um, I have seen him on um, multiple forms of media, giving commentary. Um, put your hands together, family. Put some claps, some hand claps in the chat and welcome our dear brother, Richard Sudan. Richard, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Vicky Show. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you for the lovely introduction. As you know, it's always an honor and a pleasure to speak to you. We appreciate your work this side of the pond here in the UK. So big up, Vicky. Thank you so very much. For those of you that don't know, I'm going to have to get the, the link. Um, also, um, because um, he recently interviewed me, it was absolutely amazing. Um, and so some of the clips have been out. I know he's going to be putting out some more clips. But if you want to watch the full uh, interview, he has it available now on his YouTube page. So I want us to be sure to support that. Uh, so family, be sure to check my community page later today. It's already on the community page, but it's way, way down. So you probably won't be able to see it. Um, but we're going to make sure that we put the link to that so that you can uh, watch that. Yes. Everybody's saying welcome, Richard. Yes, yes, yes. So family, thank you so much for giving us a big thumbs up, thumbs up, share, share, share. Now watch this. We're going to, I want uh, you, um, Brother Richard, to give your feedback. Give us um, your, your take on what recently took place with our brother, Dave Chappelle. Now let me just read a little bit of this article for background. And then I'll look for your uh, your commentary. Now, some people may or may not know you're an international writer and you have a very unique expertise when it comes down to uh, uh, the Palestinian, um, how do I want to word this, um, fight uh, for justice, their land, and unfortunately them being colonized and imprisoned um, by Israel for so, so many decades. And of course, it's come to this point, uh, not because of just what the media has been saying in terms of this 
It started because Hamas is attacked uh, on the 7th. No, we know this took place. Um, there was a ratcheting up. There were some things that were going on long before this that mainstream media didn't tell us about. Yes, uh, mainstream media came and told us about when somebody responded to it and made uh, gave us the wrong context. But if I hadn't mistaken, isn't one of your your uh, media uh, um, companies called In Context? Mm -hmm. Context is important. And that's why I have him here to help us to understand what's really going on in that region of the world. Uh, are y'all hearing me today? Somebody was talking about uh, Palestine and so forth and so on. I'm going to talk to you, family, a little bit about why I'm discussing this. I want my foundational Black uh, American family here in the United States to understand really what's going on. And I'm going to really give you a heart to heart um, in just a moment. But let's get to where we're going, family. Everybody hit that thumbs up button. Share, share, share. Uh, and let's listen to this. Here is the article. Family, I did not do all the fancy stuff with this stream to make it official and stuff. But here's the article from Dave Chappelle. Y'all see that headline? Dave Chappelle tackles the Israel-Hamas war on stage with mixed reaction that included early exits. Now, that's from the Los Angeles Times. I'm going to tell you the truth about what really happened in just a moment. But just listen to some of what is being said throughout um, media family. It says Dave Chappelle, um, I'm gonna skip to uh, this, actually the second paragraph because the first paragraph is irrelevant. It says um, on Thursday, when having taken the stage in Boston to entertain, he tackled the Israel Hamas war. The controversial comedian's comments reportedly spurred some audience members to get up and leave. Quote, this is what Dave said, as a comedian and satirist, he has, he has to navigate, and satire, some people pronounce it, he has to navigate the complexities of competing truths, um, presenting perspectives that can be both thought-provoking and challenging. That's what his spokesperson said, right? Uh, in response to this, um, in response to um, the Times on Monday afternoon, it says. In his set, he both condemned Hamas's attack on Israel, according to the Wall Street Journal, and decried some of Israel's subsequent actions against Palestinians. Now that's important. So even though he criticized both sides, y'all pay attention. Pay attention to what happens even when he tries to strike a balance, but y'all listen. His comments on the violence began with him defending Harvard Law students who lost their job offers for supporting Palestinians, according to the Wall Street Journal. One audience member then yelled, shut up. The comedian responded by taking issue with the Israeli government for cutting off water, electricity, and other essential resources to the Gaza Strip, as well as the displacement of 1.1 million Palestinians from the northern Gaza. He also mentioned the role the U.S. funding for Israel may have played in the conflict. I'm going to leave it there, there right now. I want to say, dear family, that I'm a 44-year-old girl from the South. You all know that, born and raised in Mississippi. I now live out here in the wild, wild west in America. In our books, I was raised to where it was mandated that we learn the history of the Jewish Holocaust, yes? So as I got older, and even before I got older, thankfully I had intelligent mother and maternal grandparents that raised us about and, and, and informed us about black history. I always thought it strange that when we looked at our black history and the black Holocaust that exceeded the approximate five years of the most intense times of their Holocaust, not only has the length of our Holocaust exceeded theirs by centuries, the intensity of it exceeds theirs, we could argue because obviously the length as well but the world, the United, the world and the United States of America has neither ceased nor desist her oppression of us. The world rallied to ensure that they got reparations. Black Americans fought in the war to free them from Hitler. So when they fixed their lips to call us anti-Semitic, watch my video from yesterday. Shout out to Minister Farrakhan that is suing the ADL and that's suing several of the other ones for erroneously misusing the term anti-Semite. 
He's finally taking them to court. Talk black to me, somebody. Their press release talked about how they use this word as an infringement against first their First Amendment rights, among other things. And they talked about how they used it uh, in a way that has affected not only he and the Nation of Islam, but other businesses, entertainers, and other people that has substantively affected their business. We, more than anybody, understands what's going on. And let me say this, and Brother Richard, jump in here just a moment, but I got to say this. Because I'm been, I can sense what's happening with my people with me. Why is Vicky talking about this international stuff? This ain't our business. What's going on over there? Let me tell you something. I am not unfeeling or insensitive to the fact that some of us gives the world a bit fat middle finger because when we have evidence that they crucified us, not some Calvary over there. But the Calvaries that are in Mississippi, that are in Alabama, that are in Texas and throughout America, nobody gave a damn. When they chopped off the fallacies of our men and raped our mothers, impregnated them, set them on crosses and crucified them and ate their body parts and fought for them, nobody cared. Right in our day, I cover stories, Brother Richard, where they're still lynching our people. In my day, in my time, just a few years ago in Chicago, Bird out of Chicago, got in trouble over technicality. The one that ran, uh, one of the uh, 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 police officials that ran a section of Chicago for torturing black men there. Uh, in our day, we're not talking about some stuff way back. We see footage of them blowing off the heads of our people. Yes, we see our homelands, our, we see our homes, we see our votes, we see everything being taken from us. And some of our people are saying, nobody cried for us like that because i'm seeing global solidarity i'm seeing voices that are using slave terms colonization terms for the palestinian people and they should but i didn't see them crying a river for us like they did for them why is vicky talking about it number one because i'm the original woman somebody say talk black to me what does that mean that means that we're the original people and so there is something about us that has the divine right to rule the world and that has a feeling and an understanding about the way in which it should go. That's number one. Number two, as the mother of civilization, I speak. But I'm coming and adding my voice to this because I wanna be that black female face, that girl from Mississippi in solidarity with truth and justice, which simultaneously puts us on the stage that we might be remembered while we stand for some of them. Are y'all hearing me? And as I do lots and lots of independent research family, I'm finding out that whether you know it or not, some of these folks from around the world actually have tried to stand with us, but mainstream media would never, ever let us know it. Are y'all hearing me? That's the truth. And so if you are the ones that's been forgotten the longest family, if the world's attention is on this matter, what do we look like retreating when this is an opportunity for us not only to stand in solidarity against injustice and add our voice to it, but this is an opportunity to let them know, don't you forget us. We can say we stand with you because of what we've gone through. Talk black to me, somebody. So yes, I'm going to speak about this because the world is our business. And much of the undoing of our people, unfortunately, some of these folks in the Israeli government assisted in our undoing. And some of these other members around the world assisted in our undoing. And you ought to know that. So those are multiple reasons. This is what I want you to hear from me. When some folks are giving me these little slick comments and saying little crazy stuff about why am I talking about this kind of stuff. And it's about world rule. I'm going to let our guests talk now. But this is exactly what I'm going to be talking about also on Sunday, November 5th for my ancestors webinar talking about how the Catholic Church and the Vatican stole their ritual rights and even the very geographical location for which, from, on which they're situated in Italy from ancient black prophetesses that were known as the Sibyls. And these women had divine authority and they actually counseled and ruled the world. I said the world. I'm gonna be discussing how we can reclaim our power, me along with my brother, um, Rod Hayes, on Sunday, November 5th, hit the link in the chat. Please, 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 I said a whole mouthful 
And don't say no crazy comments about my guests not talking yet, family, because this is first and foremost the Vicky show, and I run this. So now to my guest, Richard, please weigh in, start talking wherever you want to start. Mm. First of all, Vicky, I appreciate your introduction. That was powerful. I forgot I was even on your show for a second. I was just immersed in the way you're framing this. Mm. And um, there's a lot we could say. I think, first of all, I think you hit on a very important point, and I want to deal with this right off the bat. Mm. I understand why we as black people globally in the UK and Europe and the US, we feel we've been systematically abused and left behind and have experienced racism from every mm. community possible, including the Arab world. Yes. Let's not pretend yes. otherwise. Yes. But there are many ways we're still connected to this. Uh, Come on. First of all, I think the most important thing to remember about the Palestinians, and I'm speaking from experience, from people I know, people that have got family members out there now, there is arguably more solidarity displayed by the Palestinians in Gaza than possibly any other part of the Arab world. Mm. Why is that? Well, first of all, if you um, do your digging, people, and, um, you know, the American media, the UK media does its best to subvert what I'm about to tell you. But if you do some searching, you'll see all kinds of murals, all kinds of um, gestures to the Black Lives Matter movement, to George Floyd and many others. There's statues of Nelson Mandela, Mandela. There's all sorts of goodwill and solidarity towards the black community in America Come and on. globally. Yeah. The Palestinians have always shown. And, and they've shown that because, first of all, there are actually many, many links going back to um, kind of uh, black revolutionary activism and the Palestinians. That's kind of another story. Uh, but the Palestinians were the first people, some of the first people to turn out as best they could when George Floyd was lynched in May of 2020 by Derek mm. Chauvin and his accomplices for that white supremacist murder, which is what it was. Mm. Number two, apart from the solidarity that the Palestinians do show, and don't take my word for this, just listen to many other activists. Uh, Tor uh, to 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 Torin Walker, uh, Torin, uh, I forget the brother's name. He he's another activist in the US. Okay. Um, but th there's many that highlight this point. Um, but also, I think, this is the key thing here. What's happening in Palestine is not about religion. This is about white supremacy and colonialism. Now, all of us in the diaspora need to be concerned with bringing this wicked system to a halt because this system is interconnected globally. We know that many US police forces go and train with the Israeli police force. Uh, point number one. Um, but I think, you know, this is not about religion, okay? There are millions and millions of Jewish people. And when I say Jewish people, I mean Jewish people that might identify as atheists, but they're Jewish culturally, Jewish people that are religious of different stripes. There are millions of Jewish people standing against the Israeli occupation of Palestine. Mm. In Palestine and Gaza, there are thousands of Christians too. You know, it was a Baptist church that we believe Israel allegedly bombed the other day. I say the word allegedly with a pinch of salt. You know what it is. Come on. Now, you know, Israel has no problem even targeting its own civilians when needs be to maintain the status quo. So I want you guys in America to really forget about religion. There are videos you can look up on YouTube where you can see the Jewish community and the Muslim community and the Christian community in Palestine living side by side Thanks. in harmony before 1948. So what is this really? Do we really think that it's some bad luck accident that this colonial settler enterprise was mm -hmm. formed in 1948 during the sort of uh, kind of end game of colonialism? No, it wasn't. This was a white supremacist idea and ideology from the outset. You have the Balfour Declaration, which preceded the 1948 Nakba. And this was essentially the Bank of England and the then Home Secretary in the United Kingdom, Lord Arthur Balfour. And this is all documented. Don't take my word for it. Yes. They had plans to partition Palestine way before 1948. So this is a project of racist, white supremacist, settler colonialism. Mm. It's no different from apartheid in South Africa. Come this on. is the reality, but this is why the media that essentially works for our governments, when I say our, I mean the US and the UK, uh, they, they frame it They frame it as about Judaism because colonialism and apartheid racism is a lot harder to sell. 
You know, hmm. this is this is the reality of what it is. So I think more and more people are starting to really frame it in this way. But, you know, this is another point I want to make. If this this entity, which calls itself Israel, is really a safe place for the Jews, who as a community did experience one of the greatest crimes in history, mm -hmm. okay? There's been many crimes. This is not oppression Olympics. Right, right. Why, exactly. why is it? Why is it that black Jews that flee Ethiopia, Eritrea, and Sudan, and elsewhere, often fleeing war zones where Israeli bombs or Israel has funded the bombs or sent the bombs or whatever, why is it when they flee to Israel seeking sanctity, they get met with anti-black racism in South Tel Aviv in the slums they are forced to live in? Why is it that half these people that all of a sudden you never saw speaking up they're not speaking up for black Jews. Well, why is it if this is about Judaism? Could it be this is not really about religion? This is about racism and about white supremacy? Could it be? Could it be that's why the Jewish voices, the millions of them calling this out, are being stifled? Have any of you in the US heard about these millions of Jews that protest in the UK? Come on. Elsewhere in Europe? No, of course, they do not get the mic put under them because, of course, for most people that don't really have the time to invest in this, right. it's, you know, it's going to reveal what's really going on in an instant. This is not about religion. Come on. It really isn't. This is about settler colonialism. And actually, you know, just look at the language for a minute that's being put out by the Israeli government. They are handing guns to settlers <laughs> in the West Bank. So everyone's talking about Hamas, 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 Hamas. There's no Hamas in the West Bank. So why is it they are massacring people in the West Bank right now? Come on. Again, I'll let your audience discern for themselves. But like, you know, this is an unprecedented time we're in when politicians are literally repeating lies to mm. all of us. You know, that they're, they're trying to make the case for war. And actually, Vicky, I want to make an important point here. And I'm, I'm so glad you started off with that. It, it I don't even have the words for it. Mm. There is a global anti-black war. That is reaching the apex because Ooh. white supremacy is in its final, you know, this empire will die. It will be the shortest empire of all time. White supremacy is reaching the apex right now. Come on. We understand globally. And of course, why is it? There's $110 billion for apartheid war and there's mm. no money funding the anti-black war, fighting the anti-black war in the United States. If the war on terror was real, it would have started with the U.S. police force. Come on, wait, 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 <laughs> I got to the, the, the Proud Boys are not even the domestic terror group yet. Come on, like, what, what is this war against terror when you're funding terror and you're not fighting the anti-black war at home? And these politicians want our votes. And I say our votes because we have the same dynamics here in the U UK. Right. It's a little bit different, but liberals are just, you know. They take the black vote for granted. And these days are done. These, they, these days are coming to a close, you know? Did you all hear? I see y'all putting that gavels in the chat. I see y'all putting the gavels in the chat. He said they would have started right here in the United States. Brother Richard, I've seen you post on Twitter folks that are um, that stand with us in solidarity in Palestine, images and murals of of the George Floyds and so forth. So I know it's real. But again, Joy Reid on MSNBC, CNN, ABC, CBS, all of these legacy media family, they didn't show us this stuff. And I, I saw that from you. So I want to tell you something too. I do a lot of geopolitical coverage on African Diaspora News Channel. That's one of the networks I'm on. And one of the pieces I did, uh, Brother Richard, we recently had uh, here in the United States in New York, the UN General Assembly. Uh, the 78th General Assembly, right? I watched so many of the speeches. And let me tell you something. I was extremely emotional. I was boohooing and crying, listening to so many of the speeches from our African brothers and sisters from around the world, some of our brothers and sisters throughout the Caribbean and some of the uh, the islands. Do you know that some of the islands reps that were coming up there, I had to look, I had to look up. Wait a minute, where is that? <laughs> where is that? I've never even heard of that island before. But they were given... Uh, 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 the powers that shouldn't be that everlasting work when they took the stage. But one of the things that I addressed in one of my um, pieces on African Diaspora News was one of the reps, and I, I could pull it up right here, but I won't play the clip. One of um, the, the, the diplomats, the foreign diplomats explained 
when he got up there before he went in on it, this is the foreign minister that represents um, Burkina Faso. Guess how he opened his speech? In addition to him shouting out some of the revolutionaries on the continent, do you know he talked about and reminded us of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X? And then later in the speech, he mentioned George Floyd. He reminded the world in the beginning of his speech that the United States of America took out and deleted their own. Did y'all hear what I said? At the UN, he opened his speech showing honor and solidarity to those of us here in the United States. And I was shook, I have to say. I want you, when you mentioned Hamas, in the United States, they keep talking about this as a terror organization. But foundational Black Americans know that they called our leaders. <laughs> foundational Black Americans, we know that they called Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Ida B. Wells, Ida B. Wells, a black writer that had to go on the run, but this sister was a writer. She was a journalist, an independent journalist. She was the one that was given full coverage in her newspaper, but she kept a rifle with her brother. Do you know that when she fled her home, they shot up her home 16 times? I mean, 16 shots that didn't stop her. During the time of her contemporaries, they were scared to death to go get the coverage of lynchings, but she was not. My point is, these are the people that they had the most wanted posters on, if, if, as it were. You all understand what I'm trying to say. Our people, they call terrorists, Nelson Mandela and others. So how can we be moved with them saying that Hamas is a terrorist group? But I want you to talk to me about this. I didn't ask you any of these questions prior. But when a little bit of digging I did on Hamas, I found out that Benjamin Netanyahu and Israel and them actually was funding Hamas at one time. Am I right? Did I miss? I mean, that Hamas didn't initially had been existing all these years. They were a result of the oppression. But the little research I did, I saw where for a minute, they were happy about Hamas to bring division to the Palestinian people. Can you talk on that, sir? There's all these kind of nuances in there. I mean, let's keep the ballistics here. There was a political movement called Fatah. First of all, first of all, the Palestinian people, like any group of people, are not a monolith. There are yes. many different views and kind of outlooks within the community. It's not just one sort of... Uh, giant monolith. But at the same time, there was a political movement called Fatah uh, back in the day. And this was a kind of uh, movement which was sort of civil rights orientated, was, was kind of uh, trying to do the democratic thing. But it didn't work. It didn't work. The Palestinians are just being butchered and maimed and killed and genocided anyway. And so like any people, if the peaceful method hasn't worked, what are people supposed to do? And they play this trick book again and again and again. And again, I'm going to parallel some of the BLM things with the Palestinian things in America and in the UK and in Europe, you kneel, you kneel to make a stand and they're gunning for you. You raise your voice to make a stand, they're gunning for you. You tweet on social media, they sh there's nothing that an oppressed people can really do that will ever be enough to appease the oppressor. Thanks. You know, power concedes nothing without, without demand and the Palestinian people have been demanding their freedom and just to be treated with dignity for 75 years. And another point here, back in the day, you know, Fatah and various other political movements, they were quite happy to acknowledge Israel's right to exist. They were quite happy to concede the land that was taken since 1967, but it's not good enough. If you look at the map of Palestine from 1948 to now, it's just shrinking, 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 shrinking. Now you have the West Bank and you have you know I mean, two point whatever million people it is in Gaza. And, you know, people call it an open air prison. Mm -hmm. But I want to shout out a journalist called Alan McLeod, who's a great journalist here in the UK. And he made a very, very poignant point. He mm -hmm. said, no, stop calling Gaza an open air prison. Mm -hmm. Because if you're a prisoner, there's a chance you might leave. If you're mm -hmm. a prisoner, you'll be given water. If you're mm. a prisoner, in theory, mm. you'll be given food. If you're a prisoner, in theory, you'll have kind of access to information. In theory, if you're a prisoner, you have certain rights. The Palestinians cannot leave Gaza ever as it stands. It's a prison. And what kind of, what kind of human beings say that it's okay to deny two million people, two, two and a half million people, half oh. of them children, water, food, 
and electricity off the back of the Israeli government calling them cockroaches. This is a mandate for murder and murder and genocide is what we're seeing. And unless we all stand up and say no, this is Israel's endgame. And to be honest with you, all of us are invested in this. It's your U.S. tax dollars. Your hard-earned tax dollars are funding this madness. For how My long, though? For how long? Right. Every single year, basically since their existence, and they declared them Israel family and was recognized, we have been sending them billions of dollars every year. Brother, they'll get upset if a Black American mother who's raising three children tries to get an increase in her welfare for $30. Right. How do we justify giving global welfare to the tune of billions of dollars every single year to Israel? Can I tell you what I found out? And please interrupt. I've been teaching my audiences for years and I want to remind you, family. He just referenced this too. Israel trains our police here in the United States of America, members of the Mossad. I talked about that. But not only that, do you all know that some of ours, our police officers here fly there to get training. Not only that, some of the other research I found out, family, is that the things that the United States is not able to legally do, one of the reasons we keep sending them those billions of dollars is because Israel can do the dirty work in other countries for on our, in our, on our behalf. For example, like in Colombia, when we're talking about even the Sandinistas, I've already always referenced the Iran-Contra issue because the Iran-Contra directly relates to black folks because it had to do with them flooding our communities with dope. But they use two different countries at a minimum to do it. Are y'all hearing me? Y'all remember the whole Oliver North scandal and stuff? Watch this. But I found out that in Colombia, brother, and I know that was Nicaragua that was involved in that, but specifically in Colombia, we found out that the United States, because we were violating, you know, they knew we were violating, that we violating certain laws. And for example, when, um, I think it was when, um, What's the what's the president that's still uh that's still alive now? Uh uh, uh Jimmy uh Carter. Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter didn't win his second term, right? Jimmy Carter found out that the US they, they wanted the US to help fund this shady deal that was going on in Colombia. He said, Hell no. They said that's when Israel started upping the ante and supplying those individuals' weapons. So when we see that America is standing with Israel doing the most atrocious things and most of the world or large portions of the world are saying, hell no, this is crazy, except for the UK and the other, 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 uh, Britain and some of the other ones that, that are um, former colonialists, France and others, when they typically stand with the United States on a lot of this stuff, it's because, you know, just more than, except for those handful of folks, most of the world is actually against a lot of the stuff that we're doing. We found out that the United States, when we're funding Israel to do all this stuff, family, they do a lot of the dirty work on behalf of the United States, and the you're using your money, our black pay, taxpayer dollars, the money they said they don't have to give us for reparations. They are giving welfare to other countries, and they are using uh, working a war uh, on both a global front and a domestic front all at the same time. Brother Richard, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, you raise an important point. I mean, again, I'm going to choose my language carefully, but it's alleged people have asserted that you know. The war on Syria in the last few years, the UK, the US and her allies were supposed to be fighting the extremists in Syria, Daesh and other groups. Well, why is it that certain uh, Daesh fighters were apparently apparently getting caught up in Syria and were getting treated in Israel and then hopping right back over the border? Wow. You know, why, why is it? Where, where was the oil going in this so-called uh, war of terror, which, you know, people call a war of terror? All of this, as you said, Israel does the US's and the UK's dirty work in the Middle East. And of course, people don't really question it because, again, it's framed, you know, the sympathy of a very real tragedy, which happened or, or a very real crime, I should say, which happened in the 20th century. You know, the Holocaust against the Jews, the yeah. the yeah. feeling of that is mm -hmm. used to basically conduct another genocide right now. This is this is sick. I mean, what kind of a world are we living in, really? This is just kind of backwards, Orwellian. This goes against all the sort of principles that these politicians used to talk about when we were growing up. Let's Come be on. real now. A lot Come of us on. were fed that growing up, and to an extent, we believed it. Might have questioned it a bit, but yeah, really, you know, our countries, you know, we kind of really believe that they stood for something. Now we're seeing what our countries 
stand for. When I say our countries, I mean our governments. I'm not talking about the ordinary uh, people in the street. Our governments mm -hmm. have charted a path in Palestine, which it's clear that the majority of people, certainly in the UK, or I say a majority, a big minority, then whatever it is, is a lot of people do not want this. You know, I just took my family to the protest on Saturday in London. There were, the BBC said, 100,000 people there. I've been a journalist for 15 years. I've been on enough protests, hundreds to say there definitely were more than 100,000. In fact, the protest was so big, they had to kind of end it early because so many people were coming up Parliament Street towards Westminster. So I'm going on a bit of a rant now, but like our politicians who love to call out the human rights abuses around the world, as well they should when it is actually the case, they have blood on their hands. Rishi Sunak, Joe Biden, Blinken, you know, uh, Suella Braverman, um, you know, Macron in France, all yeah. these leaders which say they stand Ursula, for liberty are, are endorsing and providing support for the direct opposite. And one other quick point, Vicky, do you know in the UK they are about to criminalise the Palestinian flag? They're about to criminalise the Kofia? Yeah. They've done this in France. And actually, this, this, imagine this. This is not even just about the Palestinians. This is actually because the Palestinian flag has become a global symbol of resistance. And the last thing the powers that be want is all of us getting together, connecting the dots, as you talk about, Vicky, and yeah. banging on the door of our government saying no more. Because ultimately, we are the power. We are the power. We have our numbers. Come you know, on. We have agency. You know, Come We shouldn't on. fall into this trap of thinking that we can't do anything. Even raising your voice is an action. Um, I forgot your question now, Vicky. That, man, that is powerful. I was talking about the origins of Hamas and how some evidence even show, you were talking about how uh, throughout Palestine, of course, it's not a monolith. You talked about its origin, how it got its start. But even when they were trying to do it, you know, the democratized way and do this kind of stuff, none of that ever worked. And um, I was just saying that some of my research found that actually Israel actually funded Hamas and helped to uh, uh, re really radicalize them uh, uh, at, at one particular period uh, for a particular objective of theirs. And of course, that didn't end up working uh, very well. And I think some of us got to understand that this also has a lot to do with some of the other points that I was making with the foreign minister when I heard his speech and I did commentary on this as well. The foreign minister that was recently here in the United States in New York in September for the UN 78th uh, Assembly. Do you know what the Mali... Um, foreign minister said he talked about how in August of last year they reported France to the UN Security Council for sponsoring terrorism right France which is, is come on uh -huh. now which is what Malcolm was trying to do regarding the United now. States Malcolm X because this, this is the kind of a global approach that we need now but really and truly the way I kind of look at this is when I see you know uh, Biden flying for these emergency meetings in, in Israel. You know, when I see Rishi Sunak doing the same, even though he's got a brown face, although that's the only brown sort of part of thing it, about right? him. But <laughs> this is this is white supremacy moving on code. That's all this basically is. You know, in my humble opinion, you know, uh, R.I.P. Rest in power. But the late great Dr. Francis Chris Welsing, she okay. kind of broke down the most comprehensive explanation of how this kind of global system of code moves, even if they don't have secret private meetings about it, probably sometimes they do, but even if they don't, they don't need to have a meeting because they see um, they see the flow of traffic. They move in cohesion. And this is how we need to be thinking regarding this global Powerful. system. Now, I understand, again, I want to deal a little bit with the reaction that many of us have because I do understand it. We've just been trampled on. We're the original people of the earth. No yeah. one's here without us. With yeah. that said... You know, black people have been trampled on by everybody. Yes. Um, but at the same time, the global system of white supremacy is going to require global solutions. So I yeah. think, you know, we need to work hard to really, you know, the, the people that are really being divisive on either side, people that are really hating on, you know, black Americans, yes. uh, people yes. in the UK and America that might be hating yes. on um, Africans. All right, let's do this for the individuals. Um but let's understand that it is my conviction, Vicky, my belief that I really do believe it's actually oftentimes a minority of people on both sides that are doing this. You Come know, on. we have uh, this is these stakes are life and death. If we think what's happening to the Palestinians can't happen to us, let's just study history again. Let's just study history. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> it might be happening over there. Um, but history teaches us that, you know, none of us are safe in this wicked system. 
because that system will even turn its guns on its own where necessary. Facts, facts. Um, I mean, let's, let me not be too specific, but when we've even seen heads of state slightly go against the grain, even though they're invested in the system, when they just even indicate a slight change of trajectory, you see what happens to them. And there's been many examples of this. Um, you know, and again, Vicky, you made another important point. You know, they frame uh, over here in the UK, we view the Black Panthers as, you know, if not the most, one of the most significant uh, revolutionary movements out of the Western Hemisphere ever, period. Mm. Um, and you look at what they were really doing, mm. defending their communities, educating young people, come on, providing come on. breakfast programs, Ex. guiding people to be organized. Yes. Now, if they can call that terror, Come on now. Yeah. Where if they can see that terror, exactly. it might be terrible to them. It might be terror to them because they don't want us organizing and communicating and building these bridges like you and I do, Vicky. Yes. This is not what they want. And so it's my humble opinion. We shouldn't fall into the trap of division too much. Um, yes. You know, and again, just to wheel it back up a little bit, you know, uh, the Palestinians, and I, and I see it, I speak to people, um, you know, they rallied. You know, some of them were shot for rallying for George Floyd you know, mm. in various times. And yet they still rallied uh, mm. for not just black people in the US, but black people all over the world. So, I mean, for me, just on the basis that there are some allies, some very strong allies in Palestine right now, that should be enough for us to support and to raise our voices um, yes. in this regard. But we're invested in this in so many ways, Vicky, yes. so many ways we're all connected to this. This is not some far off thing over there that, you know, isn't sort of a, you know, connected to us here. We are direct, directly connected to, to all of this. Yes, this is, man, you said so many powerful things. Family, for those of you that are just tuning in, my name is Vicki Dillard. You are watching me live on my channel. I know some of you say, Vicki, I see you in other places. Yes, but I'm finally giving attention uh, to my channel here, VickiDillard.tv. Of course, you will see me on my other platforms as well, on Twitter, on Instagram, a couple of uh, Facebooks and wherever else, or Twitter X, I guess it's X now. Um, and some other networks family. Uh, but I want you all to make sure that you subscribe to VickiDillard.tv here. Family, be sure to give us a big thumbs up, thumbs up. I want you all to know if you're coming in, you're just watching, be sure to watch the entire broadcast. I don't want you to miss some very important context that we've been talking about thus far. I am here with the epic, the great, great, great brother Richard Sedan from the UK, an international journalist family. I am so pleased that I've been building with our dear brother, uh, uh, lately, and we plan on continuing uh, to work together um, and building solidarity between us in the United States and the UK uh, family. So I'm so honored and excited by his presence. I also want to say this. Another reason we're invested in this in more ways than one. And I'm talking about this because obviously this event is very important. My ancestor webinar where I'm going to be discussing how basically we retake our power because it appears that we're outnumbered, um, Brother Richard, in the natural because we don't control what the uh, sacred texts call the high places, meaning we don't have the codes to the nuclear weapons. We're not the presidents and the premiers and the government leaders, right? Uh, so, so it appears that uh, we don't stand a chance, but that's just not true. One of our sacred secrets and even weapons is our spiritual authority and power. It's the reason they cause us to demonize our own ancient rights because they know that if we tapped into that appropriately, it could ship shape the world family. This is not nothing. Everything you see, I keep saying it, came from everything you can't see. So that means that if you spend more time uh, on the unseen realm, beloved, you can create greater agency, uh, exert greater agency over your own lives. I don't want you to miss uh, my Royal Bloodline Ancestors webinar on Sunday, November 5th. The link is in the chat. Go to vickiplanet.com. That's V-I-C-K-I planet.com. Why am I bringing that up right now? Not only because I want you to attend, but for this reason. One of the reasons we're so strongly invested, there's a divine right in the original people of the planet. Our vibration requires that this time. Brother, do you know that this moves me because I know I was born for this time? I know I have something unique and worthy of the world to care. Do you understand? The direction of the world has been run by our open enemy. And it's no wonder we're getting the outcomes, family. Y'all hearing me? So if we're missing Vicky, at the me, top. One second, Vicky. I'm so sorry. I'm yes, so sorry. you're good. You're, you're good. So family, if we're missing at the top, are y'all listening to me? If we're missing on the world stage, that's the opportunity for us to insert ourselves 
to make sure that number one, we're not forgotten, but we can also speak to the whole. I don't want us to miss that. Are y'all hearing me today? Somebody talk black to me. Somebody put a globe in the chat. And this is the type of thing I want us to discuss. These are the type of things I want you all to understand is that we are worthy to contribute to what's happening in our world. And I'm not going for one. I'm not going to be one of the ones on the sidelines during this unique time. When, as I keep telling you, there's a changing of the guards. That means a natural order of leadership. And then there's a changing of the gods and goddesses. There's a spiritual change here. And some of us move uh, uh, or deal with the spiritual realm so much that we know we've had supernatural encounters that there's an invisible court in an unseen government that already understands the workings that's happening on the planet. And there's a connection. Now, this is too deep for some of y'all. Everybody ain't for this. But that's the reason why I'm having an offline webinar. Y'all make sure you join me Sunday, November 5th. The link is in the chat. Brother Richard Sudan. Now, I didn't plan on, I wasn't sure if I was going to play this or not. But I want you to weigh in on this clip. Guess what? I heard this. I watched this interview of this Israeli entrepreneur by the name of Ahmed Bendo, B-E-N-D-O-V. He was just recently interviewing with this Forbes lady. And I'm going to see if I can cue it. Is this on? And I want to get your feedback on something he says. Forbes interviewed him to ask him basically what's the impact on the economy and business in Israel since this war, right? And I'm hoping this is the section. Hold on one second. Not great either. Uh, so it's uh, definitely like even like before uh, this event, which now will be like tremendous costs. Like it, it definitely war costs money, right? And and uh, and refugees and and uh, and definitely the economy slows down. But even before that, the policies uh, of the government they're dealing with like nonsense, right? They're not instead of like people. Hold on one second. I'm going to make sure I cue this. I want you to join, uh, jump in on what I just said now while I cue this to the right point, and then I'll get your feedback. Brother Richard. Richard, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me, Vicky? Yes. Now I can hear you. Yes, yes, yes. I wanted you. I was, I was saying I'm going to cue this to the appropriate place. While I cue this, can you please go ahead and uh, feel free to uh, jump in? We're, um, Yeah, I mean, look, uh, regarding the Israeli government, we're dealing with a kleptocracy right now, a kleptocracy, because if you look at the protests internally within Israel over the last couple of years, Israelis yes. are sick to death of Benjamin Netanyahu, not for the right reasons, mm. in my, you know, not because they're uh, tired of the oppression of the Palestinians, but Netanyahu is regarded as a corrupt crook who has embezzled, allegedly embezzled money, who's basically seized control of the court system to impose his will and his power. And it's a bit like the Trump thing. A lot of people think that Netanyahu is very aware of the indictments he faces, and he wants to cling to power as much for his own personal longevity as anything else. But, mm -hmm. you know, war costs money. This war yeah. is a disaster for Israel. Uh, this war doesn't really actually benefit anybody. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, and this is also why, um, you know, there's another aspect to this, Vicky. Everyone's talking about, uh, you talked about energy and, and sort of spirituality and and this kind of thing. You know, Israel is not going to put boots on the ground in Gaza. I'm pretty certain of that. And they will not do this because, mm. first of all, you know, in the early 2000s, 2006, Israel got a hiding. You know, they got battered when they tried to go on the ground on Gaza. Uh, 2014, it's happened too. Israel can't win a ground offensive with boots oh. on the ground in Gaza. The, the fighters there have too much conviction. They know they're fighting a righteous war. They're not afraid to die. There's no other place for the Palestinians in Gaza to go other than to resist. Things cannot possibly get any worse than they already are. Um, and there's something else that I wanted to mention, Vicky, which you, you just kind of mentioned in your preamble. You know, there was a time... and. Um, uh, where, you know, Palestine and that region was actually considered Northeast Africa. Yeah, come it on. Only, it was only really the, uh, you know, the, the Suez Canal that the British uh, put there that actually divided the continent of Africa from this very important place, you know, where the prophets, peace be upon them, came from. Um, mm. You know, we see how people look in that region now. Come people on. look very different yeah. in that region 2,000 years ago. Let's start with uh, Jesus, peace be upon them, or Yeshua. Um, 
as would have been his name back then, right? There was no J until the 16th century. Right. Jesus was a black Palestinian. He was a black man from Palestine that was lynched by the uh, Roman Empire for banging on the system and for Come speaking up for the oppressed. Jesus was a black man who was lynched for fighting oppression. You know, um, a lot of people have an opinion about this war, but you know, black people are the original everything, everywhere, ever. Yes, yes. Black people were the original people in Palestine. There's still black people in Palestine now. Yes. Um, yes. I just wanted to sort of mention that because I think there's a perception around the world, especially in the Caribbean and elsewhere. We see these pictures of Jesus paraded around looking like Brad Pitt or Christian Bale. And it's right. just, uh, it's just not true. You just have to look in yeah. the Bible. I mean, your audience already know the evidence in the Bible, but there's not just the evidence of how Jesus looked. There's all the people that were in his lineage, you know, Rahab the Harlow, uh, Solomon, all these people oh. were clearly black uh, according to their own words. Thanks. Um, and so, you know, as much as they're trying to genocide the Palestinian people, there's a global effort in my opinion to, to, you know, there's a war on black people globally and they're trying to delete black history too. They're trying to control the narrative. Yes. It's not Florida, the board of education where they're trying to say now that slavery yes. was beneficial for some black people. They're doing the same shit. Excuse my language, Vicky. They're doing the same stuff over here in the UK. They're trying to do historical revisionism here in the UK. You know, they're trying to say that, uh, Britain was the first country to end slavery. There were some benefits of colonialism, mm. yada, yada. So mm. for me, what's happening in Palestine is not separate from the rest of the world. It's a part of a much wider context of white supremacy on steroids because the Anglo-American empire knows, especially in mm. America, you know, um, white people are about to be a minority in the US. Right. Um, Regarding white supremacy, which black and brown people can uphold too, that system is about to crumble. And this is why it's so vicious. And just a quick point, Vicky, I know um, this is why, you know, all the governments in Israel have oppressed the Palestinians. But we've had a particularly right wing movement, a right wing fascist government, I would say, the last few years. Look at the security minister, Itamar ben Gavir. This is a guy who defended in court a couple of Israelis who were later convicted for lynching and killing and burning Palestinians. Can you oh imagine? God. He actually defended uh, the murderers of Palestinians in court. People that were then jailed. This is now the security minister in Israel. These are the people. So oh. all the governments are oppressive. But right now you have a out of control ethno fascist enterprise that is out of control. And actually what's happening right now is, in my humble opinion, Vicky, um, 46, I don't even like to call him by his name anymore, 46 flew to Israel, the president, 46, President Biden went there and he will be saying to Israel, look, have your fun for a couple more days, but then you guys need to chill because if you keep doing this, you're going to drag in Syria, Iran, Hezbollah and a much wider axis that yeah. our governments can't deal with. And so white supremacy is so insane that wow. it even goes against its own interests, if you will. Um, Wow. You know, what Israel is doing does not even benefit Israel. But we've learned this in the past, Vicky, from history. These colonialists, they're, they're you know, they're, they're not, you know, they're not savvy enough to, to, wow. to think about that. They're just greedy, 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 greedy. They want more, 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 more. They will never stop. And really, this is why they're putting the nail in their own coffin. And it's a bit like the Haitian Revolution. If you oppress a people with such violence for so long, so long. you're going to get with an equal force when it comes to the eventual resistance of that. And that's what we saw in Haiti. Everyone talks about, you know, the French were massacred. First of all, the French uh, Polish conscripts that defected to the Haitians, they were spared. So all white people were not massacred. Mm. But my point is this, you know, if you subjugate and keep your feet on the people for long enough, don't expect anything other than the force of equal measure to come back at you. Just period, just period. That's very profound. Family, those of you just tuning in, this is Vicky Diller. Thank you so much for tuning in to my personal channel here at Vicky Diller. Uh, Vicky Diller TV on YouTube. Family, I am with, with the great uh, UK uh, writer, journalist, and so much more, Richard Sudan. Family, we're discussing the goings on. We talked about uh, briefly uh, Dave Chappelle and them walking out and booing him for uh, properly criticizing Israel. And then you got to ask yourself this. I found, I think I found the part on this that I want you to listen to, I think. Uh, but, um, but before I do that, it makes me wonder if we know that inter there's international law family, you all know this, right? About the Geneva convention family, 
you all know that there's a such thing as rules of war. That means you don't get to just do anything that you want, that most of the global body have agreed to a certain set of ways that you conduct yourself. And it's clear that one of the things that's a violation of international law family is you cannot target a disproportionately in particular and intentionally the uh, civilians. That's what's being done. Did you all hear our brother talk earlier that half the population in Palestine are children? What kind of a people? Number one, I don't know. This is how my mind works. It tells me the type of oppressor you are, Brother Richard, in my mind, if you even have the power to shut off my water, electricity, internet, and stop me from getting food. That tells you everything you need to know if in one moment they control the territory so much so that at a drop of a dime, they can stop you from getting water, food, and electricity. Family, think about that. And if they're doing the stuff that they claim they're doing, just like initially when those 500 folks were murdered in that hospital, the Israeli government came out initially one of the, my understanding, one of the um, uh, advisors, I think, to the Israeli government came out bragging about it on Twitter, on X. When he saw the international response to it, then he deleted the tweet. And you can correct me if you know anything about that, what I'm referring to right now, Brother brother Richard. But he ended up deleting the tweet. Israel ended up saying, no, it was Hamas that did it. It was this one that did it, it was that. Well, the evidence is coming out. Where it's looking more and more like Israel is lying because Israel has a track record, we know for sure, of lying about previous things that they've done. But watch this. I mean, mm. go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Jump in. A couple of points on this, if I can. First of all, they said they're going to bomb the hospital, then they bombed it. it <laughs> people literally tweeted this out. The government literally said we're going to bomb the hospital. The IDF put wow. all these tweets out, they've deleted. But even if, all right, even if it turns out it was a dud missile from Hamas, and by the way, I personally don't believe that. What are right. we really saying? All right, so, sorry, sorry, Israel. You bombed 15 hospitals and not 16. My right. bad. So much better that you bombed 15 and not 16. What the like? What what are we really, really talking about here? Um, you know, this is and this is something else I want to bring up. There's a a, a journalist called Shireen Abu Akleh who was killed mm. last year by Israel. This is an Al Jazeera. She's an American Palestinian, by the way. This is a US citizen. They lied about her, clear. right? They lied about it, right? They said we didn't kill her. It was a it was a, it was a Hamas bullet. Yada yada Palestinian resistance bullet. And lo and behold, it came right. out as we all knew that it was an Israeli sniper and Israel quietly admitted it months mm. later or a year later or whatever mm. it was. So really and truly it's not like um you know, these people do not deserve our good, you know, they don't deserve us to take them seriously. You know, right. they, they've they lost credibility. People cannot be um, attacked for thinking that everything Israel says is a lie because they've lied consistently again and again and again. So why are we supposed to take these people's words? I mean, again, and this made me laugh. It made me laugh if it wasn't so tragic. The American government and the UK government saying, yep, we've looked at the intelligence. We're confident that Hamas did this. Brought to you by the people that told you there were W, you know, weapons of mass destruction yes. in Iraq at the cost of at least a million people. No, people do not believe this. And you know what, Vicky? Like the younger generations are not buying this anymore. Buying They're not That's even right. clever and sophisticated with their lying. They're just brazenly lying to our faces in the face Come of on. all the contrary evidence. And why is that? Because they've been yeah. doing it for so long. For so they long. think they can just keep getting away with it. And they yes. think they can keep getting away with it, but it's not going to happen. I'll tell you this, the occupation is going to end and it's yes. going to end sooner than people think. You know, the I Berlin say. Wall was never going to go down. The Berlin Wall was never going to fall. And when it went, it went in a day. And you see many other examples in history of uh, things were never going to change. And all yes. it takes is a catalyst and energy that you're talking about, Vicky. And this is this is what it is. See, see our people, our communities, we know how this energy works we understand our power we understand yes. our agency and we understand our histories and actually so too do the enemy so this is like in as much as they try and kill us and, and say that us, again say that again people, so too this us, they, they understand the power of melanin they understand the power of africa they understand all the things about our histories that they keep hidden they keep it hidden and they're trying to benefit from it and you have this in europe you know throughout 
colonialism, the Renaissance, or whatever it might be, the Enlightenment. You have this Come duality on. of all these repugnant politicians and thinkers and writers spewing racism, but at the Come same on. time, they have a kind of innate fascination, desire. Some of mm. them probably want to be black. You Come know, on. how many of these white supremacists you see, Vicky, in South Africa to the United States to the UK, and they do some nasty, nasty shit, and then it comes out later that you know they had some fascination, some longing, some some desire for melanin. This is this is what it is. A lot of it's fear, a lot of it's fascination. They know what they've did, they Come know on. what they've done, they know Come what on. we're capable of, and they know in their hearts that actually. We're not looking for retribution. Hmm. They know, you know, we've always led historically as a people. The world sort of follows our trends. Right. Um, but really, really they're, they're scared of losing their power. This is what I believe there. I mean, there is an element of fear, of course, naturally, what, what you've done, you know, will be done to us. They're just right. scared of losing their power. This is Thanks. really what it is. This is what all of this is about. This is why you have Trump after Obama. I'm not a fan of Obama. Not at right. all. I, I know how things got worse for black people under his reign, but I'm just saying, just the pure symbolism of having a right. black man in the White House. Right. That was enough for America to right. lose, its, you know, lose its mind. You know, it's right. not like he was in there, like, raising the black power fist with a... You know what I mean? He was just... Even even just Fair. him being there, not doing nothing for black people, right. even that was a danger to, to them. So it's like, representation matters. Um, well said. It matters to them. Yeah, you know I mean that's why there's never good. You're not you're not seeing a black Jesus in 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 your churches, right? It doesn't matter what color he is. Why the hell are you making white them? Yes, look, they got in the chat. Richard, they said Richard Sudan is on one today. Somebody else put Richard Sudan with fiery motors. <laughs> they got you. Everybody's talking Richard. He All is right, you on guys one. Are you guys he is. Oh, he is, y'all. He is. That's my family. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I love it. This is this is so fascinating, and this is exactly what I'm talking about. Don't forget the heights of U.S. government. You all understand um, that the fear of our people. FBI Director Hoover. What did he say? Mm. He said the one that they were concerned about the the, the black lead they were concerned about was one that could do what two things they could electrify and unify the people. The United States government literally used the words in their documents about a black messiah. Y'all think about that. Folks out here talking about they ain't religious and they ain't this and they ain't that. Let me tell you something. They don't, that type of religion, I saw you retweet Bishop Talbert's statement about, what is it? The biblical Israel is not, the, the political Israel is not the biblical Israel. How did right, he say exactly. that? Remind he, yeah. Exactly as you said, Vicky. He said uh, biblical Israel is different from political Israel. And I'm so glad you brought this up. I'm so glad you brought this up. Because actually, if you talk, and, and you would have, Vicky, and if we as a people talk to kind of orthodox Jews or Jews that are quite religious, they'll tell you this is not biblical Israel. This is no. just colonialism. And we're not, we're not <laughs> down with it. I mean, look, look, look. look when um, after, after, all right, let's, let's, let's be real here. After black people had saved Europe from the Dark Ages, well, what you say? Moors, what you say? After black people had rescued Europe from the Dark Ooh. Ages, Come on. taught the European kings and queens how to not live with their animals, how to sanitize properly and wash themselves to get rid of the diseases which had engulfed Europe. After they'd done that, and the colonialists got their stuff together, <laughs> and they came and they retook Spain. You know, mm. around about the time of Columbus, this kind of period after 800 years of rule, what happened during the Spanish Inquisition? Mm. The Jews mm. and the Muslims left together. The Jews fled with the Muslims because they had been afforded their right to freedom of expression and religion under yeah. the, um, you know, under 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 Muslim rule. And so, you know, this is, uh, I forgot the point now, Vicky, I forgot your question, but the point is... Um, we, were, we were quoting Bishop Talbert saying that the political, that the right. political Israel is different uh, from the biblical um, Israel, and I, to be honest, let me tell you that statement. Religious kind of, Jews know, Vicky. This is my point. So sorry, right. religious yeah, no, Jews go ahead. know. Biblical religious Jews that actually follow their religion, they know that 1948 is not biblical Israel. They just slapped a colonial entity there and called it Israel. Genius. Come on, come on. Genius. Facts, facts, and this is one of the points Minister Farrakhan used to make all the time. He was saying about peace and all that. And he said, if you're 
about folks that are really under the righteous principles, not dogging a certain religion. We love everybody. I'm a student of multiple religions. I teach my spiritual courses because I'm a student of multiple religions. There's not, this is not one thing that I do, right? So one of the things Ms. Farrakhan said was about if you're moving in the principle of it, he said, why has it out of your 70 some odd years, you haven't had peace? There has been no sustainable peace at all. You've been at war from day one since you all did what you did. But this is what I want my people to know. Do you all understand the interconnection between the reason why they've been able to dominate and be such a stronghold in particularly in the United States is because of this spiritual and religious aspect. They have connected their rule because you got evangel uh, uh, evangelicals, evangel evangel evangelicals, I hate that term. You said it right the first time. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You have evangelicals that teach erroneously and give the misinterpretation of scripture about end times and all this other kind of stuff that stands with madness and terrorism and all kinds of stuff. So when you see somebody like Vicki Dillard that comes and say, that's a lie. When you see somebody like myself that says not only concerning some of their spiritual practices there, but I'm doing my November 5th ancestors webinar where I'm going to be talking about how even the practices of the Vatican were stolen or ancient black rites. Why is that important? Because this religious aspect is what gave uh, uh, them a natural right to rule. It's what gave them momentum. That's the reason why, and no matter what spiritual system or civilization, political and otherwise, there was someone that was known as a prophet. There was someone that was known as a seer. There was some spiritual practitioner that they went with whatever it was because that was an influence at the head of the country or whatever the political leader were. Uh, they always were able to tap into that spiritual connection. I'm trying to tell you that that's our secret to overcoming this. When we tap into our supernatural powers, that is the thing that's going to set us apart more than anything else when it comes down to this new world rule. And that's you and I, beloved. I want you to listen to this. And don't forget, Brother Richard, I'm sure you remember this. Remember Pat Robinson before he died? He ran for president here in the United States, but he owned a very large, one of, uh, uh, a very large Christian television station where he used it to pump politics and he called for the open murder of Muammar Gaddafi, the open assassination of him and others. He's the one that used his voice. He and other uh, 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 preachers and pastors and evangelists because I was taught this when I was in the Baptist church about Haiti being cursed. These are the people that tell us that they made a pact with the devil and then because they made a pact with the devil, the devil got them free. That's what Pat Robinson literally said openly and I played that clip over and over again and that's what got the people he said of Haiti free. And my point is this, if y'all believe that as, as, as true Christian dogma, right? Y'all believe that they really made a pact with the devil because that's what we call any ancient black practice is demonic, right? And the devil got them free. What kind of religion are you practicing if you got to go to the devil to get you free? If you got an evangel evangelical out there saying that they made a pact with the devil to get free and they didn't just beat the brakes off France, they beat the brakes off of multiple European countries. Listen. What does that tell you? They don't want you to practice your ancient black rights because they know that if you move into that power, that's the very advantage. That's going to be the super to your supernatural that's going to help you to overthrow the powers that shouldn't be. These are the things I'm talking to you about on November 5th. Hit that link at vickyplanet.com. Brother Richard, listen to this. I think this is the part. It's a, it's a great question. I think that's what's uh, tragic about these, these flow because uh, a lot of people in Israel, not everybody, uh, and a lot of people on the Palestinian side uh, just want to live their lives, get prosperity, the economy. There's so much potential. Uh, uh, the Gaza Strip could have been like Singapore, right? Uh, uh, it's on the beautiful Mediterranean. It could be like a tourism, like a lot of technology collaboration. What what Hamas... I want y'all to listen. I have to get your, your response to this, Brother Richard. Just for the record, this is a Forbes interview with Israeli entrepreneur um, Amit Ben Dove, he's discussing the uh, Israel-Hamas war, but he's saying something that I haven't heard in mainstream media, uh, but listen to what he says. He said, did you hear what he said the first few minutes ago, that what, what the Gaza Strip could have been? Hold on. I interrupted it because the next part he's going to say is interesting to me. Inside, uh, just want to live their lives, get prosperity, the economy. There's so much potential. Uh, uh, the Gaza Strip could have been like Singapore. Right, uh, uh, it's on the beautiful Mediterranean. It could be like a tourism, like a lot of technology collaboration. What what Hamas 
did this week is trying to murder the hope uh, because this was like in, 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 a, in a week, just a week prior, like Israel opened more working permits, like more funding to do all the things that which you would think that a, a rational organization doesn't matter, maybe like, you know, ideologically they're they're extreme fundamentalists, but there is pragmatism and, and responsibility for your people. They launched this attack, which now will bring more devastation. And, and uh, unfortunately, a lot of the kibbutzes, which is like the uh, the villages across the border, were some of the most liberal people that are employing people from Gaza, and that's what they shot. They were trying to shoot uh, the hopes for peace. There is like, uh, uh, although I can't prove it, but we're on the verge of signing a use broker accord with Saudi Arabia, right? Which would like transform the region in a way uh, that would bring a lot more prosperity to Palestinians, to Israelis, to people like across the Middle East. Mm-hmm. Um, and Hamas possibly with backing of Iran and Hezbollah, just there was like too much for them to bear and they, they chose to bring devastation. Like, uh, Did you hear him say earlier, that they basically either got some port permits not too long ago before this uh before this attack he says and they basically could make that into like a singapore a tourism place there was some tech hub stuff that he talked about um that was getting ready to take place he's a businessman or international businessman this is why forbes is interviewing him out of israel i was sh- shocked to hear him say now i'm not shocked to know that other people may want to take over that land but when he's specifically giving detailed information about business ventures, I mean, Brother Richard, weigh in. I mean, I know, I mean, I just, I haven't heard anybody in mainstream media talk about that, but I just happened to come across it. And I'm like, let me listen to this business interview. And I was like, I was like, what? <laughs> I mean, listen to what they're saying. These people are telling us who they are. Everything right. could be wonderful in Gaza if we just kill all the all the cockroaches out there and just put some skyscrapers, some fucking casinos, some hotels. Just get rid of these pesky brown Palestinian people. Everything could be just fine. You know, I've heard some horse shit in my time, Vicky, but even that surprises me. I had not heard that. I mean, I mean, the other thing he was saying is. Everything was fine and rosy up until Hamas came and ruined everyone's right. sort of palm of the year. It's fucking right. excuse my right. language. I'm so sorry. Yes. October the 7th. Like everything was all jiggy until October the seventh, yeah. I mean oh. he knows what he can do with his work permits because work permits, when your people are being butchered, what's the point in a work permit when you can't even travel in your own country? Well, oh. unemployment is rife because Israel is busy siphoning out all the resources, including gas from the Palestinian Sea, which I've seen with my own eyes, by the way. Work permits, like the Palestinian people are fighting for mm. their survival mm. because people like this business entrepreneur, whatever, yes using this language to make a case for genocide. So for me, when I hear, you know, it could be a prosperous, like, you know, the Middle East is Singapore. Singapore it's exactly yeah. the same as when they describe the Palestinians as cockroaches, whatever they call them. Yes. You're dehumanizing a people. You're delegitimizing their agency. They're literally telling you that they would like to razor Gaza if they could get away with it and just repopulate it. Well, where have we seen that before? Come where on have we now. seen an indigenous people massacred for another people to be forcibly brought in to build a civilization that never gives justice to nobody? Not even its own citizens, by the way. I mean, this is one of the tricks, isn't it, of white supremacy? It's incredible that poor white people without a to piss in in, in America could somehow feel invested with a system which never gave a damn about them either. It's because white supremacy is what? What is it our brother Tariq tells us all the time? White supremacy is a religion. Come on and now. These people are deluded and, you know, really and truly, it's a global religion. Come on. You know, and these people are trying to, you know, plant seeds in the minds yes. of people because language is powerful. You know, the it reason is. We, call it, we call it spelling because when you use language, like music, you're creating an energy, a vibration that that does what reverberates. Come on and now, so using the kind of language to soften people's sort of uh, sensibilities to what's coming next or what they would like to do next. Facts. Um, I mean, this is incredible. You're you're talking literally 
I think 700 people were killed in the last 24 hours. 700 people. 2,000 innocent little babies have been killed for the crime of being Palestinian, and they died before they even knew they were Palestinian. How about that? My God. You know, like, and the people, you know, the other point I want to just make here, if you can't talk about Hamas, 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 you know, Hamas would not exist if it were not for the occupation. Thanks. People want to separate. People want to separate. And this is, the, I'm, I'm really glad you raised that. People want to separate Hamas for the Palestinian people or the media and the politicians are trying to do that. And why am I making that point? What are they trying to do now? They're trying to say that Hamas is the same as Daesh. That Hamas mm. is the same as Daesh. I mean, when you really want to look at the wholesale butcher of innocent people over a prolonged period of time, who's the real terrorist? Come on now. Is it an, Come or- on now. Is it an organization that only got wings because Come democracy on. was allowed and subverted in Palestine? Hey. Or is it the occupier? I'll let your audience come, come to that conclusion. And, and, you know, it shouldn't really surprise us, Vicky, that your government, my government have sent mercenaries, armies around the world to undermine any attempt at democracy in so many countries. So like many. America, Africa, wherever. So is it any surprise that they would really try to, they're scared of democracy in Palestine. They're scared of democracy in the Middle East. And in fact, you mentioned Muammar Gaddafi. Yes. And he was a hugely important figure. Um, you know, he was an Arab that apologized for the Arab slave trade, which, which was a very now. important chapter. He identified as African and Arab. He was he leading one of the most developed countries in Africa. He okay. funded and, and supported revolutionary movements around the world. They don't want self-determination. They don't even want self-determination in America and in Fair. the UK. Let's be real. I mean, someone made a joke during the last <laughs> election. They said, um, you know, there was the whole did Biden win, did Trump win. Someone wrote... America's really good at choosing leaders in other countries, just not in its own country. Wow. And actually, you know, we, we see, and I'm not making an anti-American point here, I'm making an anti-American government point. I view my own government with the exact same disdain that I view yours, because they're one in the same. One in the same, the Anglo-American empire. And so imagine if we don't even want democracy or freedom or self-determination for people in our own countries, what the hell do we imagine the agenda is abroad? <laughs> These say, that again. Right, say, that, say that again. Say that again. And one more point, and I'll shut up after this, Vicky. I promise. Good. They're trying to frame this now as good versus evil, light versus darkness. Again, this feeds into the kind of uh, uh, the misrepresentation that Israel is some biblical, divine sort of thing chosen by God, as if God was like, uh, who said this the other day? I can't remember. But someone said, as if God was an estate agent, just able mm. to hand over one person's country to another. Mm. You know, we're just being wow. lied to. We're being yes. lied to. And I've seen some stuff in my time. But when Joe Biden repeated the lie, and it was a lie, uh, yes. that Hamas supported all these babies. Yes. And even when the White House issued a statement saying, yeah, actually, we didn't see the evidence, CNN was still running it. Wow. And think of, think of th- family, I, I don't want them to miss what you're saying here. What we're trying to get you to see just recently, some of you may remember this, the President of the United States just a few days ago, y'all, came out and claimed that he saw evidence of Hamas having decapitated the heads of Israeli uh, babies. Watch this. This is the president of the United States, Joe Biden. Found out that was a big fat lie. They call themselves trying to retract it. But of course, y'all know what happens when the lie is already out there to the masses by the time you try to reel it in. And they didn't go out of their way to really make it a big deal when they did claim that they um, were redacting what he said. Like he said, he said, even when he did that, CNN was still out there but still perpetuating that lie. So family, what are we supposed, what conclusion are we supposed to come to in our day, not many years ago, as he meant, as brother Richard reminded us, they lied to us about Iraq, y'all. They went to the UN, told us about weapons of mass. We found out that that was a big fat lie. Joe Biden just lied from the bully pulpit. But we're going to sit here and take the word. And then I saw where Israel came out with all this paperwork talking about they saw instructions for some either nuclear weapon or something that they found in the pockets of 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 of, of soldiers uh uh, uh, uh deceased um uh palestinian soldiers and stuff hamas soldiers i guess they found instructions for the weapons then come to find out some agencies have been saying man that's a lie that wasn't even what happened it was you know the funniest like- thing about that vicky it would yes, be funny sir. if it wasn't tragic i mean it's been fully debunked people can go and check it out themselves but the most hilarious thing if you will about that and i'll tell you what it reminded me of in a minute like it was written like on english there right 
Go no, on again. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying. <laughs> I'll just leave that there. It was written in English with a big laminated piece of card like we're dummies in school. Do you get what I'm saying? And do you know what that reminded me of? You know what that reminded me of? Not to get too deep, but um, we know what it is. In the aftermath of 9-11, which, by the way, many millions of us over here question the official narrative. I'll just say that. That was seven. But there's a lot of reasons we question it. Yeah, We were told that these planes that flew into these towers piloted by these guys that couldn't even fly a Cessna, but all right, let's assume they could pilot it. They yeah. found a passport of one of the fighters on the floor in Manhattan down below that apparently fell out the plane that flew into the building. Sorry, but this laminated piece of whatever, say, so yeah, we found this Al-Qaeda material. Uh, no, true. This, you know, how much material? This is just, it's not even sophisticated. It's kind of insulting, really. Sort of, yeah. um, there's not even a sort of decent attempt to kind of lie anymore. Um, Again, these politicians, we see the facts coming out in real time from Palestine and we're sort of being told this is happening, that is happening. I mean, look, I'm, I'm not, I don't condone any killing of civilians. And, yeah. you know, I'll go out on a limb. Like, I'll condemn any form of Palestinian resistance the day that Israel is condemned. Um, but the reality, if we get past that, if you look at some of the um, people that were held hostage, Go and look at what they were saying about the way they were treated, by the way. I'm not doing this to try and champion sort of Hamas or anything. I'm just right. saying there's a reality to all of this. And these people are saying, no, nah, they treated us pretty good. They treated us pretty humanely. Yeah. Now yeah. go and look at the testimony of the so-called democratic IDF and the thousands of Palestinian prisons and children that are held in Israeli dungeons. Go Come and on. look at how they were treated by the so-called democratic occupying forces. Come on you now. Know, see what it is. It's like, again, Vicky, another ex a sort of way you could compare it really is sort of, you know, the Black Panthers and all these groups are viewed as terrorists. Thanks. But the Proud Boys are not even designated. And Christopher Ray, the FBI director, said it was but an act of domestic terrorism. So why yeah. the hell you haven't designated them as terrorists? Could Thanks. it be? Because if you're going to designate the Proud Boys as terrorists, it's probably a bit embarrassing if 40% of your country's police force is now a terrorist. That probably... My is man, I mean, I did it. Canada did it. He, he, <laughs> even, Justin, even Justin Blackface Trudeau Thanks. Even Canada, with all their racism, even they designated the Proud Boys as terrorists. Wow. Wow. Um, this man, this was, this man, this is so, so, so very powerful. Everything that you're saying. I won't, uh, I've, I've kept you uh, long enough now, family. This has been absolutely amazing, uh, Brother Richard. I am so glad that you tuned in, uh, dear family, those of you that have tuned in. Thank you all so much. Be sure to share, share, share. Family, if you came in at the last minute to hear why we're talking about this stuff, why in the United States of America, why in the UK, why are we collaborating, why we're we discussing these types of things, be sure to watch the entire broadcast. We specifically address that uh, family, but I also want to make sure for those of you who about that, the, 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 the next ru uh, world rulers, the people that know that you were mo uh, born uh, for a big assignment in your unique way, Beloved, my Royal Bloodline Ancestors webinar is coming up where we're going to be talking about some of the codes and how we access our spiritual power in a greater way together because, baby, we're the new world rulers. And to prove it, look how the world is being shaken up right before our eyes. I'm so glad that... Vic, you got time for one more point? Can I say yeah, one I more do. thing? I do. Of course. May I, may, I, may I say one more thing? I said, of course. Can you hear me? Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's very interesting because I've been watching Joe Biden carefully, as you all have. Isn't it interesting that a man who's gone from black people, I'll have your backs to, eh, I've forgotten about you, to then go from that to cannot even find the door of where he's speaking, doesn't Ooh. know what's going on. And as much as I do not like the man and I loathe the man, I don't wish dementia on no one, right? But yeah. this is the president of the United States. Isn't it interesting that not only is he sidelined reparations and just said basically F you to black people, Come on. the only time... I've seen him show any real energy in his first term was the speed with which he flew to Israel to line up alongside Man. the Israeli government. And why is it? Birds of a feather flock together. Locked white supremacy Man. moves on code. That's not an anti-white people point. We're talking about a system. Joe Biden showed more energy. In fact, Man. I've ever seen from him regarding cozying up to Israel. Not a single dollar for FBA reparations. Come on now. You know what I mean? They try to stifle the voices you know what vicky i'll land on this as well that was powerful i'm, I'm aware of the documentary i'm aware of the documentary that Tariq's making about hip-hop which was an fba creation to be clear about now. that other people can contribute okay to the tree branches but the root 
is the root. And I'm glad that documentary is being made because, you know, like voices of resistance mm. are under attack right now. Yes. And I am a student and a beneficiary of hip hop. Hip hop taught mm. me more about the world than probably I learned in school in many ways. Some of you wow. will understand where I'm coming from. You know, a, a beautiful art form that was built from the rubble literally went global and, and created an art form that at its very best mm. can inform, educate and inspire people and offer a vision for change. And that's why right now the origins of hip hop are under attack. You mm. know, that's why I believe that the big labels, they just push saturated sort of voices. Yes. You know what I mean? Because, yes. you know, they, they want to suppress our voices, however uh, they might be, you know. And again, um, someone just put Ukraine in the chat there, I see there. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, look, we just had an international reparations conference just yesterday or the day before in London. I went to it. Um, mm -hmm. But like 110 billion more. More. Towards, more. 110,000 million dollars. Come on now. Like, come on. This is this is just uh they got money for apartheid. And by the way, just on the point of apartheid, because I know in some ways your media is even more messed up than mine, Vicky. Uh, yeah. Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, and Bet Selim, which is an Israeli human rights organization, mm. as well as the United Nations, the United Nations chief. Come on. Everybody describes what's happening in Palestine as apartheid. Come on, uh, everybody. Apartheid, apartheid is one of the most vicious, virulent forms of white supremacy. Thanks. Um, and this yes. is what's happening right now. Exactly. It's not about religion. This is about plain old colonialism. And also, just, just on this point, quick, Vicky, and I'll shut up again in a second, right? Even yes. if it was about religion, you don't have to... I mean, let's talk about the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Do you think Muslims, decent-minded Muslims, are sort of like lining up to applaud um, that country with the human rights abuses they do? No. So even if it was uh, all about Judaism, which it isn't, even then, there's, there's the morally right position to take. And that's why right. millions and millions of Jews around the world are saying, no, it's not about religion, because that's why black Jews get persecuted when they flee to Israel. And by the way, you know, there's there's tribes, I believe, in West Africa or I forget the name of the country that can trace their lineage back to the original tribe of Judah. Come on now. True, scientific. So why are people not speaking about the black Jews if it's about religion? That's right. This is That's not about right. Religion. This is about white supremacy. You see any of these people? Ever, somebody tell me in the chat. You ever see these people speak up for the plight of the black Jews in South Fair. Tel Aviv, being Fair. murdered, beaten, and worse? No, this is just plain old white supremacy. We should call it plain what old. it is. That is so so good. Which is why I keep saying we got to understand how they lace religion and spirituality in justifying oppression. Do you all understand that? It's like That's white Jesus. Calling it yes. about now is like the white Jesus card. Exactly, exactly. And then they're telling us in America that it's about Muslims and this kind of stuff. But that's why we're telling you, y'all, that it wasn't mosques that they that Israel is in trouble for blowing up right now. It's a bunch of churches. Do you all know that the Orthodox, the ancient Orthodox Church in that region of the East came out with official statement condemning them blowing up one of the oldest Orthodox churches out there, family, where people took refuge? Do you all understand? That, that's why some folks in America quietly sitting there tripping because they're like, wait a minute, this was this was this was a Christian cherry. This was this was that tells you everything you need to know. Talk black to me, somebody. That this ain't got this is not about that. They trick you into believing. They try to trick us into believing, right? That this is about religion so that we can uh stay on these different sides and entirely miss the point. But let me say this too, and we'll go. This is the reason why it's so important to support folks like Richard. And folks like the Vicky Show, with your watching, with your reposting, with you tuning in. And I'm going to say yes, even with your financial support. I started the broadcast talking about how I've been demonetized, how they've been censoring me long before COVID and other kind of stuff because of our righteous stance. Watch this. But family, it's up to us. When you're in a war, I keep saying this, do not expect the opposition to keep your war chest fat. They're not going to make sure you're good in war. That's on us to do. And we're seeing, though, with those that have come out to tell the truth with large platforms on this, I have been seeing very large platforms be demonetized. I have been seeing them loose. One guy, I heard him come out say that this was his primary source, the people that's bringing you the truth. This is the reason why mainstream media family, this is the reason why legacy media mock us. That's the reason why they join in when they claim, oh, we're censoring folks online because of misinformation. No, they're doing that because the, the numbers show 
Whenever they get ready to do the demographics and ratings, they're showing that more and more people are listening to voices like ours and they're losing their place in the world. And every time CNN or one of the others try to get online to do what we do, they fail miserably. And I'm specifically talking about their streaming service, which they spent millions of dollars and had to shut down in five minutes. Look that up. So you've got to understand, family, that this is the reason why I keep saying that not only is business warfare, but also media is warfare. And it's important that you support these types of voices because do you all know the reason why mainstream media is even sort of kind of a little bit, just a little bit halfway kind of sort of dropping one little dab of truth in here and there? It's because of the pressure of the ground, of the grassroots. It's the pressure of the masses of the people like you and I, are y'all hearing me? That's hearing these traces of truth here and there that challenges this lie. Do you understand? It's what I call your modern false prophets. It has to be spoken out into the atmosphere first. And that's what shapes societies. They create this environment first before they get ready to go to war and do certain things. So it's very important. Be sure to support. Brother Richard, please let us know your last words before we get ready to get out of here now. You know, it just reminded me that, you know, new black media is winning globally. And I'm so glad I'm linked up with you guys mm -hmm. over there you know, in the U.S. And actually, you know, this is the reason why Roland Martin, bless him, who's never, ever going to get a job in the White House, uh, ever. You know what he's still it's kind of embarrassing. Like, as much as I don't like him, as much as I don't like him, it's kind of embarrassing. I mean, even I know that. I'm not even over there. He's never going to get a job in the White House. They just laugh right. at him. It's kind of it's kind of really sad. You know what I mean? But, um, you know, ultimately, ultimately, as much as they're losing, you know, we know they're watching us. It's the Come reason on. why fools like him. I think I tweeted him once. Like, I told him. I said, all right. You 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 hate Vicky. I understand why. You hate Tariq. I understand why. Debate me on reparations. I'm from the UK. Mm. Like work for you, uh, and I'll happily debate him on reparations any day of the week because these people are losing relevance by the day. You know, Probably. like young people, especially on TikTok, they're literally, you know, they're getting the news and they're just like replying to it and putting their own take on it immediately. So these people are losing relevance by the day. New black media is gaining relevance and traction um, by the day. And I'm actually looking forward to the future. You know what I mean? When I can take my kids to the Museum of White Supremacy, when it's finally done, mm -hmm. when we've finally got our kind of reparatory justice, when it's never going to be perfect, but we can finally step into a new world. You Come know, on. I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. And this is what all of this is about. And I'll land on this, Vicky, and I'll land on this. Yes. The world is changing. You know, new economies are rising up that are no longer under the control of colonialism. We're Thanks. seeing it around the world. We're seeing countries that have been under the thumb of oppression for hundreds of years say no more, no more. From Mali to Burkina Faso to Haiti to everywhere. People are rising up. It's a matter of time before we step into a different uh, world. And, you know, these people are losing relevance. Our time, our time is now. You know what I mean? Our time. You know, Africa, the African diaspora has been in a dark age for a while now. You know, we had our golden age. We had the mm. dark age, which was recently. You know, I think we're going to see a world within the next few decades where, you know, um, we can finally see some semblance of equality. Um, it's going to be tough. It's going to be a tough road. Things are going to get, mm. they're going to nosedive before they start to peak. But, you know, as long as we keep working together, collaborate and building those links, listening to each other, working with each other, building allyship where we can, rejecting yes. people of course that we should you know i yes. think a lot is possible vicky you know you're Come one on. person that i've learned from and appreciate when you talk about the power that we have i think yes. it's something we will know instinctively even if some some of us can't articulate it we yes. feel it we know it we're standing on the shoulders of our ancestors we love them you know we're here because of them yes and we owe it to them to, to really fight for something better than what we've had. You know what I mean? We we have a certain level of privilege now that our yes. ancestors did not have. Imagine what they went through. This is why we need to keep fighting, in my humble opinion, from America to Palestine, to the UK, to the Caribbean, to Africa, you know, the beautiful black African diaspora. Come on. Yeah, we're here for something different now and we will not be silenced anymore. We won't be silenced anymore. I absolutely love this. It is our time now, beloved. And it's such a privilege to have you with us, dear brother. Family, don't miss Sunday, November 5th, baby, where myself and uh, brother Rod Hayes, you all know the mystic Rod Hayes, well respected for his deep, deep, deep uh, metaphysical insight on so many different things. Family, we're going to be talking about the power seat of the Vatican and how those powers and rights were originally 
uh, from a group of black prophetesses. We're going to get into details about that. But of course, I'm going to be talking to you about some certain rituals that we're going to engage in collectively so that we can grow uh, and nurture our spiritual power so that we will be prepared as the new world rulers. Our time is now. And this is what we're talking about, international issues, global issues, baby, because we belong to the world and the world is ours. And we have something to say. Somebody said, yeah, Chief Rod. Yes, you know who I'm talking about. This. I've seen several people say this statement right here. I had chills throughout this. Oh, that's so beautiful. So many of you all have said so many similar things. Thank you all so much. And they've been giving you so many wonderful compliments too, Brother Richard. Uh, thank you all so much, family. You're going to be seeing us collaborate, I'm sure, in the near future. Of course, I'll keep you posted. Join my email list, family. I'm doing so many things. Y'all know I got a book that's coming out um, uh, in a few months called The Dark Goddess Invasion. So my our team is helping me finish that up soon. Then I got my magazine. Oh my gosh, Brother Richard, look. Hey, congratulations, Vicky. That's uh, this is my magazine. That's amazing. Let me get my copy, please. I expect okay. one in the mail ASAP. Uh, you know, Vicky, man, listen, Vicky, we have so much respect for you over here. Uh, you oh. hear from me, but there's a lot of people I talk to that have a lot of love and respect for you, you know, and the audience. Like, we love you guys over there. We care very much, we care very deeply about what you guys are dealing with over there. And we're prepared mm. to utilize our voices and, and do anything we can to, to help the black family over there in the U.S. Because we see ourselves in you, you know. Uh, we are all interconnected. There's a lot of diaspora wars going on. And let, let me be very clear, the tethers, the naysayers, the sellouts, they can do one. But let's right. build in that middle ground where we all can kind of really um, connect and support each other. So, Vicky, I'm so happy to see that. That looks yeah. amazing. You keep going. You keep doing your amazing work, Vicky. Uh, you've Thank got a lot you. of love over here. Thank you so much. And then uh, in the back, I'm going to do ever, uh, I did advertising. So I'll eventually uh, do some. I'm going to have to make sure I connect with you, uh, my brother, because this is my little mini luxury um, uh, magazine about Venus. And I'm dealing with the woman and, you know, just something that's beautiful specifically, you know, uh, for us, it's coming out. But I'm going to release this um, during the Ancestors webinar November 5th. So this is one of the products that I, I, I cannot wait uh, to release for you, fam. This is for you to nurture your spirits. And uh, continue to do what we do here, family. Thank you all so much. So, uh, they're asking how they can connect with you, also, um, Brother Richard, in the chat. Uh, just just Google me. I'm on Twitter, Insta, all that kind of stuff. Just at Richard Sudan. Um, let's connect. Let's build. You know, so many stories. Anything you guys are thinking about, but yeah, just I'm not hard to find. I'm kind of an open book. And I just want to say, Vicky, thank you for having me on. Uh, give me the platform, Vicky. It's always an honor, um, a real privilege to speak to you. Um, so I'm Thank grateful. You. I'm grateful for your time as well, Vicky. I'm grateful Thank for you. your work, and I'm grateful for you raising this important issue at this important time. Good thanks. It's, it's I give thanks. This is so wonderful. And please give my love to the UK family. Okay, I can't wait to go. Wow. I've said this before, but I can't wait to start traveling when I get ready to do the Vicky tour. And uh, certainly, uh, the UK is on my list, and so I just, just cannot. Hold wait. Out. We're ready, Vicky. Just hold yes, on. We're I'm ready. We're ready. Uh, absolutely amazed at the number of people from around the world I literally hear from. So I never, never, ever take it for granted. So love y'all so much, family. Everybody, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. I can't wait to see you November fifth. Get your seat today. The link is in the chat or go to my website, vickyplanet.com. I can't wait to see you again. Love you, family.